Hey, hey, can you hear me? So. Probably gonna start right now. Welcome, welcome to the stream. I'm just starting a little bit of a chill stream tonight. Um, got a few things to do. One thing is gonna build a new clockwork into my kitchen clock. Um, currently running with a normally battery driven clockwork. So just you, you have to set the time manually and then every single year, uh, <laughs> if there's a daylight change, it, you have to, you have to fix it manually. So I'm going to simply remove this old clockwork. Um, and then we're gonna insert hopefully seamlessly one that is just driven by um, Wi-Fi, so we don't have to set the time anymore manually. So I think it's gonna be simple. Got myself this new, yeah, this is the old one. You see, this is very simple, battery driven one. And I've got myself a new one from Ali. Express, it's a little bit bulkier. It uses two batteries instead of one battery, but um, should be should be driven uh, or it should get its time over Wi-Fi. So we're gonna see if this works out. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Um, later on in the stream, are we gonna do some scanning? Uh, just got some scanning job here to do. A few. Uh, Things from the puppet player. Um, he brought me a few uh, devil's hands, <laughs> basically. <laughs> that looks a little scary. But he brought me a few things, uh, part of a puppet, where we want to do some scanning and I need to replicate that later um, by 3D printing it. Anyways, coming to back to the clock here, um, I think the only thing first to do is to insert this from the backside. And then we're gonna select which uh, pointers we actually wanna use. So, guess it comes in, hopefully fitting in the same hole, yeah? Looks good. Anyone in the chat? I see 3D Medic Wine just killing time at work. <laughs> What's your time? What's your local time? Let me know. Let me know where you're watching from this little chill stream tonight. In Germany, it's currently quarter past 9 p.m. So it's just a little bit later in the evening. Not too late yet, but yeah, it's becoming, getting into the night. So I think this looks good. Just want to fix it a little bit better. So we are having the adjustment right. The thing with this clockwork basically seems to be that, um, first of all, we want to sure that it is centered. Uh, from
So, my remote microphone died for some reason. I'm gonna charge it. Found the battery is empty and I did not realize this. So, let's see. Okay, so, yes, okay, good, good. So, hopefully you can hear me and my microphone arm is long enough. So, if you can't hear me anymore, let me know. The <laughs> mic is unplugged again. So, I'm bringing us a little bit closer so you can still hear me. Um, Regarding the... The pointers that I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna go with these uh, three ones here. They are a little bit edgy. The other alternative is the round ones. I don't like I don't like these round ones so much. So and there's these traditional ones. I'm gonna go with this one here and I'm gonna go insert them first. So the idea is that we're gonna use them. In an order where we're gonna use uh, the thickest one first that goes to the bottom. Okay, number one. Our pointer. Second one is for the minutes. Obviously. So, and second, the second pointer Does it work. I hope so. Okay, so how this should work is that we are having everything pointing at 12 and then we're gonna insert the battery. So the clock can start and we can connect it to the Wi-Fi. That's at least how it should be working. So battery is in. And I want to make sure it's centered. And we can unplug this little pin. And now it's running. So, I guess uh, now, at least if I'm not wrong, I can find this clock and it has a local Wi Fi network. So yeah, Wi-Fi clock network is found. Just wanna make sure that it's running. There's a little bit too much pointing upwards here. I'm gonna push it a bit down, go down. So that's that's good. It shows us if we like if it doesn't hurt, if it doesn't touch any of these numbers. But I think it's it's down running underneath smoothly. So there is my Wi-Fi clock. I'm gonna use my studio network or yeah it doesn't really matter. We can just try the test network. Okay. Um is it correct? Yeah. Say Maybe it works. Let's see. At some point, it should be finding a network time. And when it's connected, I think it's going to be blinking. Yeah. On the backside, there's a little, I think you can't hardly see it. It's blinking red. And then I think now, since it's connected, it stopped blinking. It should be. Oh, 
some point it should stop and going to the right time. So I think that's already already done. Um, second hand is stuck. Now it should be working. I think your second uh, pointer, the second hand is not, it's not gonna move until it really has network time. The other ones are kind of going around. I think it's going to, at some point, going to uh, move to the final time. Here it is currently 9.25. So any, any, any time soon, hopefully it's going to go to the right time. Yeah, <laughs> hotfix. I may have gone a little bonkers on ordering 3D filament over the back Black Friday. Yeah, <laughs> I think I've ordered also too much stuff on Black Friday. I was like, I think this year was really, really terrible. I found so many interesting things that I wanted to to get for myself from different 3D printer stores, filament, electronics. Oh my goodness. I'm curious if it's going to stop at uh, 9.26. Let's see. Hopefully going to work. Let's see, let's see. Everyone else, um, let me know where you're coming from. Say hello to everyone. Matos, uh, welcome to the stream. Didn't welcome you. Yeah, my audio went off for a few minutes, I guess, because my, uh, I don't know, maybe I left it on last time and it was already almost empty. So the clock doesn't stop here. Seems that it's not yet connected. Uh, let's see. Or it's going full, full circle until it's hitting 12 and then maybe, don't know. It's the first time I'm using this. But yeah, let's see. Maybe waiting. <laughs> Mad scientist, welcome. Yeah, just doing a little chill stream. Oh, it's oh, something is happening. Probably stopping at twelve again, doing a full circle. Maybe this was just a test round to see like whether it's moving. And this looks great. So anytime we should have a connection, hopefully. As curious as you are, this is going to work. Oh, something's happening. So I guess now it's really moving to 927, very slowly. <laughs> Yeah, while we're waiting on this, um, what did you get for Black Friday? What was your biggest purchase? <laughs> I've got myself a bunch of parts for my V100 3D printer build. You might have seen this on my Instagram. So all kinds of parts for this printer, mainboard, motors, linear, bearings and all kinds of stuff. How do you check the clock once you put it on your Wi-Fi? Is there a web interface? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Is it is it connected? I mean, now it's connected to the same network as I am, so I can double check whether I can see it. From my router. Good question. Uh, network is quite slow now. A bamboo lab, X1 carbon, carbon with AMS. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's that must be twelve hundred bucks something. Roundabout, I think there was a discounted version, right? Twelve hundred roundabout. Oh my goodness, yeah, I got myself this. Um, I didn't show you yet in any of my videos. Uh, I have got the P1P a few months ago already. 
and now I've managed to get um, this upgrade kit. It was really hard to get it because it was always out of stock. So the upgrade from the P1P to the P1S, all of the parts that you need to make it enclosed, the glass frame and stuff. So I'm gonna do this. One of the next streams, um, I will upgrade my P1P. And yeah, then I, I was, yeah, and I was a little bit crazy. I got myself also in, uh, I think a Voron 0 0.2 um, build kit. So <laughs> I've got plenty of stuff to do until the end of the year or maybe even beginning next year. So, but first, first, first things first, I think the first build um, that I'm going to do next is um, the V100 uh, 3D printer. With all of the 3D printed parts. Let me see. I got it here. This part of the frame. Uh, it's a f like almost fully 3D printed uh, Core XY printer. Look it up. It's called V100. Um, pretty excited about it. And yeah, that's already uh, a little community building up for this printer. So all kinds of uh, upgrades, mods, bigger print bed. It's fairly small. I think it's a 138 millimeter print bed, but there's already people uh, using uh, bigger ones and modifying this printer. So let's see. Now we're getting close. It's 9.31. Uh, yeah, looking good, I guess. The clock is working. Fairly correct, I would say. All the numbers here, I mean, it's not that precise, but it's enough for a kitchen clock, <laughs> kitchen wall clock. So let's, I mean, then I think this this project, we are kind of done. We wanted to double check if we can see it in the network. Let me see if I can bring it up on my phone. No idea. That is a very good question. Is it showing up in the network? Let me try on my computer. So is it is it in the network? Probably yes. Question is what name? There's too many things in the network. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe, yeah, not easy to find it because the name is probably not showing up in my list. Maybe it's some random IP address in the network, but yeah, we can probably find it out. Um. Anyways, I've, I've I've tried this already without mounting it, so you can like basically just reset it and like reconnect it. Um, but yeah, probably gonna find out if I'm diving a little bit deeper into all of my network devices here. Um, what's what's going to show up in the manual? I think there's nothing about a web interface, honestly. But maybe. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing about any web interface. Let's see. It works, so I'm happy. Aska Westberg, hey. Prusa 4. Yeah, I see. You're going for the expensive printers, my, my friends. <laughs> Go fast parts for my 14 inch audio. What, what else? What's, ah, what, no, 2014 Audio 6 and another resin printer to the fleet. Oh, another resin printer. Which resin printer did you get, Mad Scientist? I'm interested. So I'm going to put this. Uh, 
put aside because we need a little bit more space here. <laughs> so the clock is working. We're gonna put it into the kitchen tomorrow. Not the CNC kitchen, obviously, but real kitchen. Um, my second job today is I have a little task here from my puppet player friend. Uh, he's always coming back with new stuff. Um, so this time he has got some, I think he's, he's doing a devil figure or something. Um, the body seems to be, he has already uh, made himself a copy, but now he brought me the the legs and the hands, or the feet and the hands, and we need to scan them. And <laughs> I was first looking at that and was a little scared. Like, whoa, what is that? <laughs> but that looks a little scary. Anyways, task is to copy those and... Um, First step is of course scanning them. And I need my my computer doesn't have Revo scan latest version yet. Yeah, so first of all I'm gonna download Revo scan. I guess um while I'm doing that, <laughs> any cubic 6ks, is this um a, like what's the build volume of that printer? The 6ks. Go, 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 Revo point download. Here we go. Okay. So let me share my screen. I'm downloading this little app here. Revo scan five. That is the latest version for the POP3 3, 3D scanner. Oh, and the chat window is almost invisible here in front of the white screen. Yeah, just gonna, I think we can fix that. <laughs> no problem. So many things on my desk here. So, Google Drive has detected issues with your download. Yeah, thank you very much. Anyways, going to download it. And then we're going to install it because this computer is has never been used for scanning yet. Okay, so the Anycubic 6KS has 195, 122. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's fairly big, I would say. How do you like resin uh, 3D printing so far? My experiences, if I remember correctly, weren't that great. I mean, from a perspective of the smell <laughs> that it creates in my workshop. Uh, and since I didn't have a ventilation system here yet, I was rather turned uh, turned away from using resins 3D printing. I'm thinking about it. I mean, always thinking, yeah, is it maybe worth trying it again? Maybe there is new resins that don't stink that much, but I'm still hesitant to go back to resin, resin 3D printing with all this fluid spilling on my desk and everything is i don't know you have to use so many tissues and stuff i mean that was the the biggest hurdle that i had with uh, resin honestly yeah <laughs> i do not care for okay yeah maybe you don't have a family at home that where everyone's coming 
firmware update. Yeah, do it. Um, the biggest problem with, with resin was just from that one try that I did here on the live stream. Must be two years back. I don't remember exactly. And just from this one day where I tried it, um, the whole house was smelling like crazy. Uh, even though I had the windows open, maybe that was the actual problem. Because if you open the windows in the basement, everything goes into the house instead of going out of the basement windows. Because like the cold air is coming in and the warm air in the house sucks the air in. It goes out to the top. So it's like, this house is not so, I would say it's not so uh, isolated or airtight as i would say so if you do something that smells in the basement and you open the window especially in, the, in winter then you're like gonna have it everywhere in the house <laughs> it's guaranteed <laughs> because there's everything is like there's always little gaps here and there and then yeah i would say garage would be an option for me maybe i have a little space above the garage only problem with that space is it doesn't it's not yet fully closed yet so it's like kind of a open shelter uh and uh, if we would have some kind of uh, i don't know, doors and, and and a little bit of isolation i could have a little workspace above the garage that's that could be a a long-term solution for this kind of smelly stuff Interesting. I went to the outside with a dryer vent and an inline fan. So you're like kind of blowing away the, the smoke. Okay, so we're updating the firmware for our scanner. Carbon filters only do so much. Yeah, I can imagine that. I think it will probably be a little bit better. It will help a little bit, but not that much. I'm wondering if I can do anything to improve the visibility of the chat here. Maybe we can um, we can make it. Uh, we can set the um, transparency a little bit. I don't know. Is it possible? Mm. wondering if we can uh, make it a little bit i don't know less transparent blending method blending mode add subscribe screen mod uh, light and darken not sure if this helps no that doesn't really work <laughs> i think i have to learn a little bit more about overlays in obs what well, but yeah, we're building up this this live stream setup while on on the go. Basically, uh, last time it was a little worse. Now it's a little better, and and it's going to improve over time while we are doing more live streaming. So, almost done with the firmware upgrade. The green anycubic supplies a horrible smell, yeah. There's, I think there's worse ones, ones that smell more. Um, I was curious if, for example, there is water-soluble resin and and the like the normal resins that are only soluble in, in uh, alcohol. Uh, I was always wondering if water-soluble resin is smelling less, but maybe it's no difference. I don't know. I don't know exactly. I never tried. Almost there with the upgrade. So while this is happening, I'm going for here we go. 3D scanner. So let's see if the scanner now connects. Mm -hmm. Connecting. Okay. Scanner is connecting. Scanner connected. The oh. 
How do we do the scanning calibration? Ah, please hold the scanner and click start for vertical calibration. Okay, let's do it. Let's do that. Okay, hold scanner. One full rotation. Okay, I'm gonna do one full rotation. One full rotation. Forward. Done. Okay. Uh, I need to untangle this cable first. Okay. Hold scanner, click start for horizontal. Uh huh. Okay. You can't see it at the moment, but I'm doing it. Rotating the scanner. Complete. Okay. Nice. Good. Guess we can start now. How this works essentially is that we are. This is my table here, and the scanner needs to point down on this little turntable. And my plan is I'm gonna try like first without any scanning markers, without any of these dots. Um, just doing a few full rotation, um, but I can already see that we have a little issue here with the finger nails because they are black. So that's always causing trouble because black is essentially invisible for this type of scanner. So it might be that we need to tape them off. Um, yeah, we can first try and adjust the settings because there's also settings for dark objects that can sometimes help and we also set high accuracy standard sometimes helps reducing the accuracy it's not that important for this type of thing but i see it doesn't really change so much exposure is another topic you can light up scanning area using this little lamp here might help but not necessarily making things better so there is a few things we can try to tweak but it doesn't help all the time and sometimes we just simply have to tape off the black side of things or we need to use the scanning spray so I think that's all we can do. Yeah, dark object really doesn't help here, seems so. Yeah, not that much difference. Auto white balance. Um, yeah, the exposure we can try to. Yeah, but this, this is only for the camera. We can try to bring it up, but it partially helps, you see. It can help, but it still doesn't work with the black fingernails of this hand. So only thing left to do, in my opinion, is really using the scanning spray as a last resort. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna try one turn, see if it's working in any case. Start. And then we are going to enable the turntable from my point of view, using turntable is always the best option because it's like you don't have to move the scanner around and it gets you most of the time gets you the best results. Probably need to find some white tape or use the scanning spray. The problem with the scanning spray is similar to it's similar to uh, using resin in my opinion. I mean, it's not that worse but it is, it stinks. So I'm not sure about the chemical side of things of the scanning sprays, if they are in any way toxic. I don't think so because it's always said that they are not toxic. So I'm now turning around. Let's see if we are lucky and this thing picks up. If not, we have to find uh, some kind of an intermediate, maybe we'll put it to the side intermediate position from this so we help the scanner find 
its orientation again. That's mostly the hardest thing to find an orientation as a next orientation that has parts of the original features and new features. But I mean, we can try if it picks up the scanning. If not, we have to probably trick around a little bit with some tape. Oh, picked up, okay. Yeah, sometimes you're lucky, sometimes not. Okay, so I think at least we found a way to do this now so that we know now that it's going to pick up the scanning orientation. So it's really just sometimes trial and error, finding the right starting position, the right starting orientation of a scan, then finding the next best. And now we're going to fully put it onto the back side and continue. And hopefully it's going to pick up again. Yes. So not that complicated actually, but we're going to have a look at the result in a second and we're going to see if we can improve this by uh, using a scanning spray. Uh, or we can just trust the the um, whole closing uh, algorithm that it uh, manages to somehow close these gaps in a meaningful way. Uh, I think it's already good enough. I think it was actually not really necessary to do the third iteration, but yeah, we can try again. Complete the scan. Okay, so let's see. It's the point cloud. Looks rather clean. Maybe we are kind of lucky so we can close these holes here automatically and we can... The thing is with this with this puppet player stuff is it really doesn't matter so much that it's 100% accurate because um, my friend uses yeah some kind of... I think it's uh, masking material or something. I mean, he's using... Uh, how was it called clay molding clay or something and he is always uh, using that to fix parts of um, of his um, puppets or add something or smooth out the surface so like even if that is not perfect yeah let's see i mean you can continue to the next step the next step here is essentially you can do all the steps individually or just uh, one click one stop um yeah, we can go apply this. Just go and do everything automatically just for its first iteration and see what, what comes out. What is computer doing? Why is it? What's happening here? I think the stream is uh, lagging quite a bit, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> that is the calculation going on. Oh my goodness. Seems that this whole calculation process is taking a lot of CPU time and so it's <laughs> the stream is lagging. <laughs> you see, that takes a few uh, CPU cycles to calculate. Let's see. Good. Processing. Okay, let's wait. And what's the CPU load? Let's have a look. Task manager. What is happening? Not so much, actually. Hmm. Yeah, and it's done. Okay, so we have a few gaps here and maybe some cross finger connections here that aren't perfect, but yeah, I mean, few things can be fixed in the after or in the, in the post-processing, not in the 3D, model post-processing but in the actual physical post-processing when you 
half the model 3D printed, you can just like open up this little gap here yourself. Let's see, what's the next step is uh, fill holes. We can try that. Let's try curved. I'm curious what is happening. Yeah, close, select holes that you want to fill. Let's see, does it work? Is it red when I want to fill? Or do I deselect? I have no idea, honestly. Maybe you want to fill everything? I don't know. Is it red for not filling? No, red for filling. Okay, well, that doesn't look so great, honestly. I mean, yeah, it could work. But I'm a little afraid that these, like, uh, cavities here, that is, it's later going to be difficult to print them. So my best guess is that we will have to use the scanning spray to, uh, yeah, scan them more correctly. The other thing here is these... Uh, the gap here between the fingers, it's not perfect. I'm also not sure how to, like, if this can be improved uh, by moving the scanner. It is close enough and probably right distance now, but yeah, the resolution is probably limiting this and also the lighting situation depends a little bit. The scanning spray might also help with that. We can try it now. I would say we're not gonna use this first try. We're gonna just delete it and go back and do one more with scanning spray. But I need some cardboard to cover this here. So, just by using a little bit of cardboard here on the table, making sure that we are not spraying on things that we don't want to. Uh, bring the slide over here. So, I'm gonna take this hand and just gonna apply a little bit of the spray here on the top. Let me see overhead. Here we go. I don't know if you can see it now. Here it is. We're gonna apply some spray here, just a tiny bit. I can link you the uh, the scanner. Um, let me let me dig it out. I think I have uh, some links here for you. Uh, let me see. So we have um, scanner is a Vivo point pop three. The turntable is separate. It is a completely independent thing. In my case, I'm not using the the turntable that comes with the scanner because uh, I, I'm preferring this one. This is a remote controllable turntable. You can control the direction, the speed using the remote. Um, probably might have some links. I'm gonna put them in the show notes later. So I'm gonna put every, every link from this video here into the description of the replay. So you can come back tomorrow uh, and check out the links. Um, that's probably easier and we can uh, now just simply continue with the stream. So my idea is I'm going to use the scanning spray to cover the black fingertips of this, this hand here. I will cover my camera. Not spraying. on the lens. So hopefully that is enough. Shake it for a minute, yeah. Maybe a few more. 
objects. So let's try. We just want to do a little bit. Yeah, this is already. This is probably already almost enough. And the stuff, and it's the on, only unfortunate thing about the scanning spray, it stinks a little bit. Um, it's probably not, not really a huge issue. Let me see. Mm. I'm gonna go back to the scanning app. I'm gonna bring it back here into. I mean, kind of show it again. It here. Here you see. This is the scanning spray now. And the scanning spray covers the black stuff. And that's enough. Um, so we can scan the black things. And it's going to disappear in probably in one hour. And it stinks. <laughs> but it's really good. It's very effective. So let's go back to the home page. No, don't want to save. Go back and restart the scanning. And you see immediately right from the start, fingertips are visible and not uh, like we had it in the beginning, uh, like basically invisible because they were, were black. So the distance is excellent. Don't want to change that. Uh, the light is good from the side. Let's go. Let's start one more time. So turning on and we're doing the first rotation here. Um, don't care so much about the cavities here uh, at the end of the, the hand. That is something that the, my puppet player friend, he will fix it himself using his molding clay, whatever that is. And now after the first rotation, we're going to turn it around a tiny bit. And probably need to open a window, honestly, it stinks so much. So this was my first rotation. So we're gonna turn it. Uh, I think we had it this way. So let's give it a try. Start and turn. Tracking is lost. It takes a few seconds, hopefully coming to the other side. Tracking should be picking up again, as we did in the beginning. Yeah, it stinks. I hope it's not super toxic. <laughs> okay, picking up again. Great. Great. And we cannot wait for too long. This depends on the situation and room temperature and all that stuff, how long it will stay um, on the surface and uh, starting to disappear. So we don't want to waste any time. And I think we're going to stop it here, turning it fully on the back. Actually, not 100% sure if we need another scan. We can try and check. I think we should have enough data already. Why not just complete it here? Let's do it. I think we only need that. It seems to be complete. I mean, since we're not missing, I mean, we're missing a tiny bit here, maybe a tiny bit, but I think that is, well, well, we can resume. Yeah, maybe. We can try. Maybe filling this little gap here. Hopefully it's gonna pick up. Come on, my friend. Yeah. This could work, yes. So we're giving it another turn. Maybe we're gonna fill these little last gaps here. But the other thing is if you're not, like if you're scanning for too long, you might generate too many like uh, data points that later aren't actually needed and then you might actually make it worse. And let's see, let's see. Didn't really close that gap for some reason. So it's not really helping. I guess we need, we don't need the third iteration, only two. Anyways, let's try to do the next step. 
and just fuse the point cloud together. This is going up. Just a little bit of fresh air. Okay, so we're probably done with this first hand. This is the left hand. Oh, I'm gonna continue with the right hand and the the feet and now we're already done i think this is going fast not gonna print this today just gonna finish the uh, post processing here but we're learning something new every single time honestly wow that looks so much better so much better yeah i mean this is we now close these last holes here automatically fill detect can we just select everything all yeah S control a selects all just gonna go with all and see that, that's, that looks good that looks good no open holes and really doesn't so matter so much if there's any like like again we have these little issues here between the fingers that can be removed later we're gonna fill it with a little bit of a higher infill so later on we could just remove that and smoothen it a little bit um yeah he's gonna post process this anyways physically so let's export already uh the mesh model um so let me just, just save it on the desktop a new folder devil it's hands <laughs> good left hand left and mesh uh, we can save it as STL. Yes, that's good. Save it. Yes. We're going to do a new project. Um, yes, save it. I'm going to do a next one. I prefer to do separate projects for the separate objects. You can do multiple objects in one project. I don't like that so much. Want to have it separate so next one is the right hand we're gonna spray it as we did with the first one just gonna put it here spray the fingers so a little bit better i'm starting with this side <laughs> let's do it just a brief spray just a few ones Okay, that feels good. Finger. Good. I guess this is. Let it dry for a couple of seconds. It stinks. But the window is open now, so hopefully not gonna get sick from this. Okay, carefully. When it's wet, I uh, can probably get. Probably gonna rub it off a little bit easier, but now it looks good. Looks good. So let's start scanning right away. Uh, the app is already picking up. Let's start and start the first rotation. Hopefully, it's gonna work. I'm not sure if this was enough spray. It looks a little bit like the fingers 
Oh, maybe he has to adjust his exposure now. But yeah, we know now how to do this. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we're getting there. Getting there. Full turn is is done. And I guess if we're lucky, we can just stop it here and turn it to the other side, and that's it. That's fully enough. See if it's able to pick up. Yeah, kind of, not really yet. Well, that doesn't look so good so good. Now, sometimes you, it's it looks a little scary when it doesn't really pick it up in the first place and then it kind of reorientates and then it's it works. There's some garbage in the background that is our scanning spray on the cardboard. Uh, looks good. I think we can already pause it and see if we have everything that we need. No huge things that we're missing. Maybe here. Yeah, maybe we should put it on the back side one more time and see what that changes. Yeah, maybe improving the inner sides of the fingers. Maybe, maybe. We have some garbage here that we scanned from the background, but that's that's okay. And then we can uh, already stop here in a few seconds. Should be done. Well, what do I want to do with the scan? The thing is, this is this is coming from a client, so they want me to uh, scan these hands and the feet. That's basically a puppet player puppet. <laughs> So um and the puppet player is like I, I worked with this guy uh, he's he has a little puppet theater with lots of different uh kashpal and whatever you call it and uh also the unicorn that we already duplicated here on the channel I made a video about that duplicating a huge unicorn puppet and all that stuff is made from wood originally and clay modeling clay and um, he wants to duplicate these things either for himself. Um, in this case, he wants to large, uh, enlarge it, so make a larger version of it, of the whole puppet. This is only the hands and the feet, but he already kind of modeled the body for this because that was easier. And um, yeah, or sometimes he also, like he's, He's an older guy. He's probably thinking about his legacy also. He's uh, duplicating his puppets that he made in his like 30, 40 years of doing the, the theater. Um, and he made made copies of those puppets um, for clients, basically other puppet players that want to use them in their shows. Um, actually, what I want to do is I never got to the point, uh, never had the chance to see the copies in real time in real life so after they have been painted and uh clothes put on and stuff so maybe i get a chance soon to cover this a little bit of behind the scenes how this looks finally when he like has done the all of the assembly and the post processing and yeah that would be really nice um so i, I will ask him next time because i think it's, it's interesting to see the final result right so i only saw the printed parts never saw the final final thing in in uh in real life usage anyways uh, we have a nice scan of the right hand and we can go to the next step and uh, maybe we want to remove the garbage here a little bit uh, let me see if we can do it before before we do anything else, I'm not sure if we have uh, any, I think we have to do the fusion first. I'm not 100% sure if I can select anything yet from this point on. 
because we have some background noise here which is supposed to be removed not sure if i can somehow select stuff here no i think we have to go to the next step before we can edit the stuff so mm, maybe just go to the fusion step in this case we wanna using method standard i don't know point distance why is it no different let's try actually I, I, with every new version of this application do more settings and it's going to take a few more CPU cycles to do this and it might be lagging the video a little bit chopping so while this is happening i'm going to put the rfp here um to prepare the last one no, the third one and then we have another one and if i'm not wrong we have to we have to put the spray the spray on both sides because only the nails are black where really the hole ends yeah you saw the unicorn video that's great because then you know what what i mean with the with the puppets but um never got the chance to show you the final unicorn maybe we can uh, we can show that next time when i see this guy and he uh, probably has a show running somewhere <laughs> i mean i need to be there it takes time to go there visit the show see the things happening good uh so what about now editing did it actually yeah it's created some stuff here what you don't want so uh, can we now select stuff here yeah we can so i'm just gonna select this here delete select delete and yeah it should should be it should be done already it's fairly simple you just have to like find the right orientation where you can delete the things and now we can move to the next step um overlay smooth simplify mesh i think it's we can already hole filling is already available let's do it let's try what happens that doesn't look so great honestly no let's go back can we undo the step? Hmm. Fused. Let's go back. Raw. Fused. Raw. Actually, this does look a little bit noisy here. I hope that we don't have to redo this. Here, between the fingers. Oh, sorry, you can't see this here um between the fingers there is yeah it looks a little bit that it picked up this the finger twice but we can the mesh is not very good so maybe maybe we have to redo this last step here can uh isolation uh yeah let's see we can uh apply smoothening a little bit and meshing let's try let's not try to fill the holes in the first try it is a little bit better but honestly i guess we go to back to the raw it's already a little bit noisy here we have too much noise going on here and it was a little misaligned so I, I guess my best step here is really going back and do this again just scan it one more time it doesn't really take so much time um scanning spray is still good let's say yeah maybe we need to do a little bit again tiny bit So let's see how many people are really watching at the moment. 13 people currently in the stream. As we finish this little scanning project here. Okay, I guess this is all it needed. 
let's let it dry for a couple of seconds and then we're gonna do this one more time going to delete this one uh, this is the one that was successful this wasn't really good let's delete this you can also rename it left devil left and New session. I guess next this time I'm going to use two iterations, not a third one. I think the third one actually made it worse. So let's go. So one full rotation, and then we turn it to. Um, we could also try to do it directly. In, to the back it is worth a try let's see if this works so finishing the first round and now we're gonna pause it turn it just to the back. Let's see if this works. Maybe we have luck and we're lucky and it picks up the orientation after a second. It's first lost the tracking, of course, needs to find back into the right orientation. And this could work. Yes, it worked. So this software is pretty good. I mean, if I compare this with the Creality software, um, the, the Revo point is absolutely, I would say, 100% better by so many, by so many things. Just orientation, resolution, cleaning up works so much better. I guess we're gonna stop it already. I'm not sure, uh, but I think we have everything that we need. Honestly. We should have everything that we need to make a good version. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, this looks also from the, there's also no background noise, so we can just go for the one click fusion. Again, the stream might be lagging now because of the uh, CPU. Crazy right now. <laughs> Coding overloaded. <laughs> uh, but we're not dropping frames. We're not dropping frames, but we're a little bit, uh, it's just a little slow. Okay. Let's see what comes out of this. I can already, I think we can put this hand away. We can already do the last, or uh, well, not the last one. Uh, now this time's. Still not doing the last scan here. But we can already apply the scanning spray. So it can dry a little bit. Good. Let that dry. Scan is complete. Wow. That looks pretty good. Again, these little artifacts here, these will be removed in the physical post processing. You can just go and fill the holes and then have, have that done. Yeah, even though it doesn't look really super, super clean, it is really not so important because, yeah, we just print it out and then sand things off or cut them off or it doesn't really matter so much because it's printed in this orientation and then we can just go and remove it. Let's export this file as a mesh model again, as an STL file. 
devil on my right hand mesh. Yes. Okay. Let's go back. Save the project. Um, it's the right hand. Right hand. So we have the next item coming up. This was Probably this is not super perfect here. Maybe we need to oh, do one more little touch here with the spray. A little bit missing. Okay, so hopefully this is better now gonna wait a few more seconds until this is dry <laughs> good and put it on if this doesn't scare you <laughs> if your feet look like this then you know something's wrong <laughs> so let's go one rotation from this side probably a little bit close but yeah let's see let's see that's a little bit strange with the camera here on the right hand side is it shows actually more than the depth camera view on the left hand side seems that the yeah yeah but could also be correct not sure but I, I think this the field of view is is a little bit larger than what's shown here on the left. So, one rotation, and then we're going to try maybe this position. You can't really turn it on the back anyways because there's this little metal piece sticking out. Um, so I'm gonna start here. Let's see when the uh, Tracking is picked up again. How are you doing so far? And it's picking up. Hey guys, let me know. How are you doing? <laughs> is this interesting to you? Any questions so far? So I think we're good. We're good here. Finishing this uh, this turn. Um, let's double check what we have. If we have everything that we need, are we missing any huge parts? Maybe, I mean, this isn't so bad here. We can probably skip this, uh, not having to do another round. Actually looks quite good. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should turn it around. Maybe that helps. Let's turn it around one more time. Let's see. And we can fill a few of these gaps. Maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. This helps. Could help. Model scanner. Yes. Okay, I guess I guess we're good. I would stop here. Wouldn't go further because then it's gonna bring too much noise here. This looks pretty good, I would say. Okay, so I would say next step is complete this, have it rendering one click, edit. This is actually surprisingly good. This is the pop three, yeah? Pop three is good. Yeah. You see it? Here we go. This scanner, this is a turn table that doesn't belong to the scanner, but it's quite useful. And my viewers lack a lot of, a lot of the CPU power for rendering. Before I answer your question, I'm gonna wait until this rendering is happening because I'm not sure if you can really understand the good.
So let's wait for this to finish in a few more seconds. Okay, I guess we're good now. Fine. So far. Yeah, this looks quite good. Let's say, let's try to fill the holes. And then we select Control A for all. And then we go. That looks good enough for me. Good enough for physical post-processing after we have printed this out. That is really good. Yeah, it looks really good. It's pretty fast. Uh, the only thing is that my computer is suffering a little. <laughs> so we cannot really stream at the same time so well. Now coming back to your question. Um, this is the pop three. I think you answered that. Does the scanner do really well with mechanical parts? Um, yes, it works with mechanical parts. The resolution is fairly good. Um, there is a smaller version of the scanner, the Mini, which is better for very, very small parts. So if you really, like, if let's say you want to scan a coin or something, or something that's super tiny, then this is probably not the right one. But there's a, like, as I said, there's a, a version for smaller details. This is probably the best all-round 3D scanner that I know so far. Because it does fairly well with uh, small things, medium-sized things, even larger things that are a little more difficult to scan because you have to move the scanner. Here, as long as we can have something on the turntable that is like where we can either move the turntable further away or we can physically move the scanner a little bit up and down, then we can also do bigger things. Um, so I'd say, yes, you can use it also handheld. The other thing with the scanner is you can, uh, you I'm now using it with my PC. You can uh, plug it into your smartphone and have, uh, have it connected to the mobile app and use your smartphone for scanning uh, from any place. And, the, and I've shown this in uh, in another video. Um, maybe let's pick it out. Which one was it? Um, hmm. I have to dig out that video, honestly. Which one it was. Uh, let me see. Um, this was... <laughs> I made a video about this. Which one was it? Yeah, Revo Point Pop 3. Here it is. I'm gonna give you the link. This is the link to the video. So in this video, um, yeah, you can watch it later, just for your reference, maybe open a new browser tab. This is where I've shown the process of using the Pop 3 end-to-end, -end, also Mr. the mobile app. And the great thing is, that you can do the scanning on the mobile phone and then let, like, just hit one button and transfer this over to your computer for the final processing. So you can like have this kind of workflow. That's pretty unique. And that's I think that's part of the reason why the Revo Point scanners are generally more expensive. I mean, they now have a cheaper version, but I would say if you like want to be a little bit serious with this, um, this version is probably the best compromise. It's it's not cheap. It's not the most expensive scanner out there, but it's very capable. And I think the software makes a huge difference. If you look at the Creality ones, I think I've used it once in another video. It works, It but the software is probably the limiting factor uh, with the Creality software. I think that the physical thing and i didn't test it yet since since my first try 
the Creality uh, Scan Ferret, to be more accurate. I think from a physical point of view, from a technical point of view, the scanner is pretty capable, but the software is the limiting factor. And so that's where Rebo Point probably has a, an upside. That's what you're paying for, right? So the physical cameras, I mean, is it, how, how much different can they be actually? So that's that's why I say like better invest in a little bit more sophisticated or not at all. <laughs> Good. Let's export this. Um, it's the... Uh, what is it? The right. Oh, I think it's supposed to be the right, the right foot. Right foot. Is it a foot? Is it correct? Okay. So now, save the project. Um, devil, right. Good. Last thing now, finally, last one is the left foot. We can apply the scanning spray now. The computer is um, my computer is um, AMD. 5600x so a six core processor so i think it's 12 uh, virtual cores six physical cores um i would say it is good enough um fairly fast but could be better i mean it's, it's not like probably the 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 better compromise now is the 5700x which uh, is actually pretty cheap at the moment i think 136 euros saw it recently um and then you have an eight core processor that goes up to 4.5 gigahertz so pretty capable i would say so i'd say this computer is already good but like if you're running a uh encoding of a stream at the same time it's still like it's still gonna cause some issues the einscan sp that is also quite expensive Here. See the scanning spray. Easy to do. You have to do it on both sides with this open black. Who in the hell has black nails? No pun intended. <laughs> Must be the devil. <laughs> Okay, good. Last scanning spray session for today, hopefully. Uh, needs to dry a little bit, and then it's pretty stable for probably one or one and a half hours. And then it disappears, right? If you look at the, uh, yeah, look at that here, where is it? If you look at this hand, which we, uh, I think we did it in the first, first session uh here see it's already dissing disappearing so starting to disappear and after uh, probably another hour one and a half hours you don't see anything anymore so there's nothing on you anymore but yeah since it's a chemical i wouldn't put it on things where like it's gonna soaked up so it needs to be a, a hard surface and yeah I'm using it indoors now. It's not the best. It stinks a little bit. Hopefully they're gonna kill me. So let's go. Let's do the, the last one. Starting the scan. Turntable on. Going back into the software now. And couldn't you just mirror the STL? Well, yes, <laughs> I could, but I'm I'm a nice guy. So I'm gonna do both independently for my my friend here and he can choose uh, what he wants to
they are a little bit different at least i guess so from the first side it's it's kind of i mean it looks similar but it's not exactly the same maybe it looks a little bit more realistic if they are kind of different a little bit at least so let's stop it here uh, right now let's see uh so we want to do the underside good just turn it to one of the sides doesn't really matter and start again and we're waiting again until it finds its orientation that is what surprises me every single time it's really good in that regard it's really good so if you remember the um a unicorn scan that we did and also the test scans that i did with the scanner it was working pretty fine the only the only thing where it that really struggled was this um globe so the world globe i was thinking that it would pick up the physical like not the physical but the the patterns uh so the uh the printed on patterns of the globe that i was scanning but it doesn't work that way actually it is not looking for color information uh, to do the orientation it's really only looking for physical uh, information to do the, the tracking and so yeah it then you understand that if you're scanning a globe which has two symmetrical sides then uh, like considering it has a a holding piece where it's standing on where it's like held in it still has two sides that are kind of similar almost identical and so it's really struggling so that's why i was using these scanning points scanning markers and that helped um so that's that's good to know that you cannot really rely on the like actual visual inf information on the object but you really have to have physical um tracking or you use the scanner markers which are then it's a different scanning mode but then it also doesn't work without the scanning marker so you can just, just turn on the scanning marker mode and then uh wait but it's really needs to have the scanning markers on the object so let's stop here i guess this is good enough as i said we don't want to do too many turns and too many scans because then we can create a lot of noise that makes it actually worse so i try to stop it early enough and you see there's a little bit of noise here between normally it's pretty good filtering out most of that stuff and then if anything is left then we can also like we could go in in depth now and add all these little points out manually Almost there.
Okay, I guess now we're back in the game. Good. So, almost done. Um, the final step again is to fill the holes, detect the holes, and now we can just hit Control A. So it's like all of the holes, we can also individually select them by clicking. And now we can say apply. And we're done. And looks, actually it looks the best. Compared to the other ones. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That I think the uh, uh, fingers are spread apart a little bit more and that makes it a little easier to pick it up from the scanner. So let's export this mesh model as an STL file again. I think we're missing one. Oh, we were like, uh, what is this? This is the... Uh, Depends. Could be the right foot. Was it? Not one hundred percent sure. Maybe I confused them now. Let's save it. So I think I didn't export. No, it was the uh, left one actually. Okay, let's rename it. It's doing it in the wrong way. So left devil left foot. So let's open it one more time. Export the STL left foot and we have the right one. I think the export did not work last time or kind of didn't click OK. Okay, right foot. Yes, replace it. Okay, so we should have everything. All of the limbs have been scanned. And my job is done for today. Uh, next step for me is to, to start 3D printing this stuff out. And um, we need to upscale it a little bit, I guess, if I'm not wrong. I guess a little bit of ups upscaling is done. Make it a little bit bigger. But yeah, that's that's it so far. Um, <laughs> my job for today. Um, yeah, next next thing we're gonna do some. Uh, I don't know when we do the next stream, but probably this week, uh, in the evening, end of the week, more likely. Um, and then we'll see how many of the parts for the V100 build are already here, so we can uh, hopefully start building it. Um, the first step in the build process is going to be the um, hot end and extruder. So we're going to start with that, and then the top frame, and uh, yeah, I'll let you know on Instagram. So if you if you want to see how far I'm at with the, regarding the parts uh, coming in um, and other things that are happening in the studio in the meanwhile, just go to my Instagram, um, Daniel Crosslink, on Instagram or on X, formerly known as Twitter. So just follow me there so you can see um, what's happening during the week. I'm posting almost daily on my progress with my projects at the moment. I'm really quite kind of active, especially in the evening when I'm, I think yesterday I repaired two printers <laughs> um, and uh, I had to do so many things. So I'm, I'm really posting my updates here. I'm also currently, uh, if just, just, just to show you what I'm doing uh, as a side project, Currently, do this. Currently, printing these these panels here because um, th they are IKEA Scottish compatible, and um, I'm printing them. So I'm gonna put them on this side here on the wall. Um, completely random colors because I'm using up all of my old. PLA filaments that I have left over.
and then um, basically want to screw them on the wall. Gonna print out some filament spool holders, um, tool holders, all the stuff. And the next step or the plan is that I'm also printing these panels and all kinds of uh, different calls for the other side of the wall, probably. Or uh, I'm gonna use gray. So the, the, I mean, at least for the back wall here, I have an idea that I wanna like have a uniform color because I don't like these wooden panels anymore so much. Um, and I also wanna have a tool wall, a universal mounting wall where I can put everything that I want and in any position. So my best guess was using these panels. I didn't wanna go for this hexagon grid because that's probably everyone knows um because it like it doesn't really cover the wall and i don't want to paint the wall so i really want to have something that covers more of the color and has less uh coming through from the back and yeah i'm looking for a filament sponsor at the moment who wants to pay for the filament for the background so i'm on the way probably gonna have someone sponsoring this so i can print i don't know maybe a hundred panels for the background maybe also doing the right hand side with gray so uh, we can use then special filament that is non-reflective and takes up uh, for example the background lights um, picks up the light and like basically absorbs it so we can like put light on the wall or use led stuff um, to really make it shine but not like uh, reflecting like the white light so much so it's like compromise like we had it in the studio uh, in Augsburg, like where we have this, we have where we had to painted the wall in light gray, and the light gray was really perfect for using RGB lights to change it in any can in any color that you want. It was super helpful to make uh, I don't know some <sighs> screenshots for thumbnails or anything. It's super helpful if you have gray background because gray, neutral gray, is the best background if you want to do photos or anything and you want to use rgb so that's it for tonight hope you had fun watching this and um, we're gonna see each other next time um how do you process the data first on last two questions last two questions for tonight um you could process you could do it in revo scan revo scan has a pretty advanced functionality to clean up your scans so you can uh, basically uh, work with the point cloud remove any of the artifacts um, you could do that directly in the software you can use all kinds of filters to like filter out noise uh, in the software but if you like want to do it externally or you already have an stl or a, like, if it's already meshed um, you can also use blender or mesh mixer which is open source programs and i use those to i did that i think with blender i did a lot of the modification if you go back to the unicorn video with blender i actually cut out a slot in the middle of the piece uh two times actually one for the like basically for the junction for the um how is it called interlock pieces where they come together i i was cutting out a huge uh slot in the middle um and then also um, in the middle, I was also carving out a huge hole for putting in some mechanical pieces in the middle of the part, which wasn't really picked up by the scanner. So it's kind of, that is something that I would do in Blender because that's uh, fairly easy to do. Uh, maybe we we just do it at some point here. I could show it how 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 it's done. It's super easy. Just you you need to know how what what tools to use in Blender, which buttons to click, <laughs> as it is always, right? So then you can do it quite easily. Um so I'm gonna see you next time here on the channel for an either a video or a live stream. Whatever fits me first. Whatever suits better. See you there. Bye bye.